Hi, I'm Vikas Sohal. I'm a psychiatrist and neuroscientist at the University of California at San Francisco. And I'm Anthony Lee, an MD-PhD student here at UCSF. Okay, big picture. We're interested in two questions. First, how do microcircuits process information? And second, how does the brain make decisions? For this, we decide to focus on a particular class of cells called vasoactive intestinal polypeptide interneurons. Hey, Vikas. Let's just call them VIP interneurons. Uh, okay, sure, Anthony. Anyway, VIP interneurons are actually inhibitory neurons that inhibit other inhibitory neurons. This creates a sort of double negative, which, while bad for grammar, can be useful in the brain because it reduces inhibition onto cortical excitatory neurons. Here, we study how this double negative affects patterns of circuit activity. Moreover, these patterns of circuit activity actually influence the decisions that mice make about whether to boldly venture forward or just, you know, hang back. Since Picasso didn't do any actual experiments, let me explain how we study these questions. We use the common behavioral assay, the elevator plus maze. As you can see, there are two open arms and two closed arms. Oh, hold on a minute, Anthony. These open arms are terrifying. In fact, I'm, I, I'm shaking just looking at them. <laughs> well, because it's true. Mice tend to avoid the open arms because they're exposed and brightly lit. This avoidance behavior is known to depend on input to the prefrontal cortex from the hippocampus. First, let's see what prefrontal VIP interneurons do in this maze. Using vibrophotometry and GCAMP to measure the activity of VIP interneurons in behaving mice, we found that VIP interneurons seem to turn on when mice enter the center and open arms of the elevated plus maze. In fact, the activity of VIP interneurons seems to predict whether mice will subsequently enter or avoid the open arms. When mice approach the center zone and VIP interneuron activity is high, the mice will tend to avoid the open arms. When VIP interneuron activity is lower, mice are more likely to subsequently venture into the open arms. This suggests that VIP interneurons causally influence decisions about exploring the open arms. To test this directly, we used optogenetics to silence VIP interneurons when mice were approaching the center of the elevator plus maze and deciding what to do next. Consistent with our hypothesis, inhibiting VIP neurons this way made mice more likely to explore the open arms. So now we know what VIP interneurons are doing during this task. They normally turn on as mice approach decision points and then promote open arm avoidance. Let's think about how they might be doing this. Maybe VIP interneurons just disinhibit a group of prefrontal neurons that promotes open arm avoidance. Or maybe they do something more complex. Maybe they permit information to flow from the hippocampus into the prefrontal cortex then the prefrontal cortex can use that information to guide open arm avoidance. First, by recording the slices, we found that VIP neurons are activated by hippocampal input and that they disinhibit the responses of prefrontal pyramidal neurons to this input. Given the hippocampal inputs are known to encode whether mice are in the open or closed arms, we wondered whether prefrontal VIP interneurons might be necessary for that information to be represented in the prefrontal cortex. To test this, we used a dual-color microendoscope for combined GCAM imaging and halorhodopsin activation. Specifically, we measured patterns of activity in the prefrontal cortex that differed depending on whether mice were in the open versus closed arms. When we inhibited VIP interneurons, the differences between open and closed arm patterns of activity became smaller. It was as if the prefrontal cortex no longer cared as much about whether the mouse was in the open or closed arms. So it seems like VIP interneurons gate the ability of hippocampal input to produce prefrontal activity patterns that differentiate between the open and closed arms. Based on that, we'd expect that inhibiting VIP interneurons would only affect behavior when the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex are actually communicating. If our model is correct, then when these two structures aren't communicating, VIP interneurons should be irrelevant. Hi, I'm Margaret Conniff, a graduate student in the lab. 
Many labs have shown that when mice are in the elevated plus maze, communication between the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex is associated with synchronized rhythmic activity that spans these structures. Therefore, we measured theta frequency synchronization between the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex while inhibiting VIP interneurons in mice exploring the elevated plus maze. Inhibiting VIP interneurons alone didn't alter theta synchrony. And when theta synchrony was low, that is when the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex weren't communicating, inhibiting VIP interneurons also didn't affect behavior. However, when hippocampal prefrontal theta synchrony was high, then inhibiting VIP interneurons dramatically increased open arm exploration. So thanks to the hard work of Anthony, Margaret, and other members of our lab, we were able to come up with a detailed circuit diagram underlying behavior. Prefrontal VIP interneurons receive direct hippocampal input. They then disinhibit prefrontal responses to that input. This enables the prefrontal cortex to encode whether a mouse is in the open or closed arms and use this information to guide open arm avoidance. When we inhibit VIP interneurons, the prefrontal cortex is no longer able to generate these different open and closed arm representations. As a result, this emotional information no longer gets factored into decisions about whether to avoid or explore the open arms. More generally, VIP interneurons do not exert a network autonomous effect on behavior. Rather, they regulate the flow of information, and thus, their behavioral effects depend on the current state of the hippocampal prefrontal network.